Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Undisciplined Mind podcast for Saturday, November 14th, 2015. I had to think for a minute there. For some reason, my brain wanted to supply me September for the month, and I knew that wasn't right. I think my brain is out to try to make me look as ridiculous as possible. So last night I got thinking about one of the, one way, I guess I'll say, of, of telling a story. And that is the technique of dropping your reader or, if it's a movie, your watcher, right into the thick of the action. And they've got to pick up what's going on, what's in the world, what are the rules as they go. I stayed up last night uh, swilling beer and watching, I finished up my writing, uh, of which I've written zero words so far today, so I need to, I need to go do some writing. Uh, yeah. But... I sat and watched Inception again. This is probably like the sixth, seventh time I've seen it. Certainly not, certainly a movie I guess I'll say I'm familiar with. I decided to watch it again because I've been writing a lot to the soundtrack this month. And I thought, you know, it's it's always fun sometimes if I've been listening to a particular soundtrack to, and I haven't seen the movie in a while, to kind of view the View the music in its in its you know original context because there's 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 always times when I do that if it's been a while since I've seen the movie where I'm I, I get these little surprises where it's like oh I remember you know I recognize the music obviously because I listen to it a lot and then I go oh yeah that was what was happening during that little bit I, I kind of forgot that but for my money Inception does this technique of dropping you. into the middle of the world and you got to figure things out as you go I think it does it exceptionally well because when you think about it in the opening scenes there you're you know the, the main characters they are in a dream within a dream and things are going awry in one level of the dream and they are in yet still a deeper level of the dream and things are actually going awry there too but it's just the way it's put together I can't I can't imagine how they pitched this this story where anybody heard it and thought how is this not going to be way too complicated to understand but they did it I forget who I don't remember if it was Nolan, Christopher Nolan, who directed this one? I forget. I have to look. But I I thought it was done very well in in that it it gave you enough information that you could follow along at appropriate times, but you still kind of walked into it totally blind. You didn't know what was real. You didn't know what wasn't real. You didn't know what they were doing until much, much later. So I thought that was I thought that was cool. I'm also reading. I started Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn series. We brought it up from a friend. Their wife just got done reading, and I thought, ah, you know, because I liked him. He fin- he was the guy that finished up Jordan's uh, Wheel of Time, and so I wanted to read something of his. And since that is available in the house, I thought, okay. Um, so I started that once I finished my reread of Mockingjay. In preparation for next week's movie, I'm kind of hoping that about this time next week, my buttocks are going to be in a movie theater seat with a bucket of popcorn in my lap. But it's doing kind of the same thing there in that he drops you into this world. You have characters that are 
going about their lives. They're using some sort of a, of a very unique magic system that's you know based on burning. I don't know how literal that is yet. Um, certain metals that they've ingested. Like at one point uh, near the beginning of the book, the main character burns tin and that heightens his perception. And as apparently he had some tin that's sitting there in his stomach uh, for just such emergencies. He's taking a lot longer showing us all the details of the world. He's doling it out piece by piece, but that's okay in a book. You obviously in a movie, they gotta get you kind of up to speed relatively quickly. With a book, you can, you can take your time a little more, and this is actually the first in, well, I guess there's like a trilogy, and then there's another fourth book that's kind of standalone that I'm aware of. So, yes, yeah, so we, we got a bit of an idea about the magic system. We know that the main character, whose name starts with a K and completely escapes me. No, it's not Keith. Uh, you know, he's got an agenda. The, 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 the governmental system there is, is very feudal. The peasants are called Ska. Yes, I can tell you're handicapped by the way you drive. Wow. Um, it's very feudal. So you got these ska that are just, you know, they are used and abused and they're thrown away. Uh, the, the, the lords will, you know, if they find a comely wench among the ska that they like, they will uh, have them brought to the manor and uh, use their bodies for as long as it amuses them. And then they will kill them because it is illegal to have a noble, a half-blood child who's noble-born and half-noble and half-ska. I kind of have a feeling that the main character is probably that. I think. I don't know. I know he's this thing called Mistborn. Don't know what that means, yeah. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting you know, way of telling a story. It, you know, like in the fantasy series, lots of times you start off with, you, know, you always got to discover things, but a lot of times you can kind of get the beginning of the story. You've got the guy who's living on a farm and, and then the thing happens and he has to leave the farm. And so you kind of, you know, or, you know, with the Lord of the Rings, you know, you got, you got uh, Frodo happy in the Shire and then Gandalf happens. And you know, so you see the story from the beginning. It would be a bit different if the story started in, like, uh, Rivendell, you know. The thing about it is, is it's, it's good when done well. So I think Inception does it well. I think so far Mistborn is doing it well. Because he's got enough action, he's got enough stuff going on that you're not left totally clueless. And I have read books and I have seen movies that have tried this technique. And, of course, I, didn't, I couldn't really think of one. I know, which annoys me. Because I'm complaining about content that I didn't like, and I don't remember what the content is, which I know is stupid of me. Um, but it's it's a yeah, I, I think it's a tricky technique to master um, to get that right balance because it is a balancing act. Um, you you are avoiding. The, the, the other traps of the you know big long expositions that a lot of people want to do to get the main character and you the reader informed on the world because he is intentionally doling it out a piece here and a piece there you know it gets you away from that from the danger of that kind of writing but at the same time you can also get really annoying if you've got no idea at all what's going on. You know, I'm willing to, you know, if you give me enough of an idea of what the character's doing or what his capabilities are, ooh, I can be patient 
for a while until you're until you'll tell me. Uh, but it's it's a that's a trust issue, you know. As I as I read this book and you know there there are these things that I, I don't totally understand and I don't totally understand how it works. I'm placing my trust in that author that you're going to get me there. You're going to get me to that point of understanding at within a reasonable time frame. And if you don't, then you've you've abused my trust and I'm not going to be happy. And some authors do that, you know, where they just leave you in the dark and then they never tell you what's going on. And some movies have done that as well and you're just like what? I don't understand what's going on. So, I mean, and, and that's kind of the cool thing about that kind of, that kind of storytelling, because it is, it does kind of take a little bit of, of active commitment from the person that is consuming it, be it a movie, be it a book, which is kind of neat, because it's not just like, going to see, you know, a Hunger Games movie or, you know, Lord of the Rings or really most any traditional storytelling where you're, you're, you're going to watch a movie and you're, you're sitting there and you're starting from, you know, point A and the movie is going to get you to point B and you're going to see the entire arc of that, you know, whereas, you know, you're kind of starting in maybe B or C and you're maybe going to get to E or F but you don't know how, you don't even know what kind of vehicle you're in. You don't even know if you're really traveling anywhere. And so that takes that, that giving of trust that, that I'm gonna sit there and say, you know, not, not literally sitting there in the movie theater saying this, but you know, internally, I'm one of two things. Either I'm gonna to say to the storyteller, kind of subconsciously, okay, I'm gonna trust you to get me there or I'm not gonna trust you and I'm gonna be confused. You know, or I trusted you and then you didn't deliver within a reasonable time and within a reasonable uh, arc of your story where I, you know, to the point where I really needed to kind of understand what's going on here at a deeper level and you didn't deliver, you know, then, then, that's, then that's an issue. So it's probably something I'd like to try sometime. I, I've certainly done more of the beginning, uh, starting at the beginning. There's a little bit in the book I'm writing now, not really. I mean, we don't see a lot of the prep work that goes into the first series of murders. We start with the first series of murders, but I don't think that that's really super important. Um, yeah, I, I've got my brain, you know, what, what happened, but I don't really think that's important. It was fine to start uh, Symphony of Death with the first murders, and then from there, we can learn about the person that's have making these things happen and, and, and continue onward. So I don't really consider it that kind of storytelling. It'd be fun to try sometime. Um, if I can find that, I'd have to find the right, the right uh, story for that. It, it, you know, something like Inception that's an inher inherently complex, that kind of works out well with that, or, or it worked out well. I suppose something that complex, if you, if you did it poorly, it would be it would be a mess that people wouldn't understand, uh, and they'd be like, "I don't understand where this is coming from, at all." Kind of like, eh, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna I was gonna say kind of like Interstellar, but Interstellar was odd and kind of inscrutable in places, not because they were trying to be coy with the details. It was just because it's odd and inscrutable in places. <laughs> So I'm not going to give it, I'm not going to say it. it's, it's, it's one of these. So anyway, I was just thinking about that as I was, as I was uh, watching Inception last night. So I think that'll be it for today. And uh, I'll be back on Monday and I'll be talking to you then. So be seeing you.